I'm not going to say the worst is over, but we definitely have an asymmetrical market on a lot of areas. So we have this, cor you know, corporate fundamentals in the fundamentals of the economy remain really strong, but the momentum and the sentiment in the market is really negative, and there just doesn't seem to be anything that we can get this market to move on that is going to take it in a direction that I can say this is the bottom. I mean, we have a, obviously having Facebook come out today will be pretty meaningful. But I think, you know, one of the things that we haven't been talking about so much is historically what happens when you have midterm elections. So since 1942, the year preceding midterm elections, you have an average of 18 percent down in the S&P. Following those elections, you have a 15 percent up. So we haven't had a ton of new information in the market over the last number of weeks or months, whether it's trade, whether it's Fed policy, et cetera. But we are focused on this strange minutia that is taking it more and more negative. And there's no reason to think we're going to have clarity certainly until after next week and then probably until we have something happen with Chinese trade. Although uh, trade and Fed policy is not minutia. No, not minutia at all. But I don't think that the, the things that have come out on trade policy and from the Fed are not particularly unexpected. It's just the focusing on very small words or lack of movement forward, which are going to continue. I, I get that they're not unexpected, but Urian, I mean, when you look at some of the earnings reports we've gotten so far, it does seem like some of these trade and tariff headwinds, for example, are starting to more broadly impact U.S. companies. You're seeing it, especially in some of the industrials, for example, that, that I cover. Do you agree with that? Um, and Absolutely. Do you agree with that, Urian? And um, also, I guess, in terms of midterms, do you think we could rally after we get those results? I think, A, absolutely, we could absolutely rally after midterms. You have traditionally seen that. And given how much negative sentiment there is right now, however, having the lowest misery index, very high levels of consumer confidence, to a certain extent, I would expect that. Urian, your thoughts? Yeah, so I, I agree with you. You know, companies are generally blaming higher labor costs, uh, weakness in China, a rising dollar tariffs for uh, basically what the market is viewing as a peak in profit margins. Um, but having said that, you know, last year obviously was one for the record books in terms of, you know, earnings uh, uh, being very strong, liquidity conditions being very accommodative. This year is kind of the opposite, and I view the, the you know, the, 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 the declines in tech really as a, as a microcosm of the market losing its momentum. So we're kind of in a purgatory of earnings being very strong but peaking. Clearly there's an earnings peak in the making at around 23% year over year. And at the same time, liquidity conditions are tightening as the Fed is, uh, is intending to move to neutral, which is about 3% or slightly higher. So, you know, I liken it to kind of like eating boiled peanuts. It's not, it's not very exciting after last year, but it is a necessary reset in the market that has happened many times in the past. Two, uh, 2015 was exactly this kind of market. 1994 was this kind of market. And, you know, the P.E. ratio is down. Yesterday at the low, it was at 15.0 times expected earnings, down from 19.5 in January. So that's a 20% valuation reset with a 10% price correction in the S&P. Yeah. And, you know, I'll, I'll chalk that up as a win. I, I think that's actually a pretty good outcome because the market was too expensive. And so um, I, I think this is the market's doing exactly what it should be doing. Uh, Although, it's a very macro oriented market right now, which is why I think yeah. that you're seeing these wild swings.